Welcome to the podcast of MotorWeek, television's original automotive magazine. MotorWeek is made possible by TireRack.com, RockAuto.com, State Farm, and WeatherTech. Here's your MotorWeek podcast host, John Davis. Hello, welcome to MotorWeek Podcast 163, and I am not John Davis, but our boss is taking a well-deserved break, so we're here to shoulder the load while he's away. And uh, I'm Joe Ligo, the podcast producer. Around our table is Zach Maskell, our feature reporter. Hercules, Hercules. And uh, Ben Davis. Hey, you guys. Our road test producer. Greg Carlos, our, uh, well, used to be assistant road test producer. Now it's officially the online content coordinator. That is me. Thanks for the whole explanation. Sorry there. (laughs) And uh, Garrick (laughs) Zykin, Mm -hmm. (laughs) our writer researcher. So thank thank you, everybody, for getting together. Right on. So in our Motor Week podcast today, we've got a lightning round discussing an item that was in the automotive news. We've got a question from a viewer about what SUV to buy. And then, of course, we'll have our rant and rave section, rant and or rave section. But first, let's get to the cars. Ben Davis is just back from driving the all-new Toyota Camry. Yes, eighth-generation Camry. And in a time where everything is SUV this, SUV that, um, Camry really upped their game on, or Toyota rather, really upped their game with this Camry. It's, it looks good, finally. You know what I mean? It's a strong-looking car, especially in higher trim levels with the quad exhaust that you can get and, uh, and some stolen bits and pieces from Lexus sort of here and there to make it look a little more aggressive. Um, Without getting too into like that crazy Lexus grill. True, true. And the good news is it still drives like a Camry that everybody – Camry oriented with uh, would feel comfortable with it sadly just looks the part in my opinion but it still drives like a like a regular yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) I I will say though there's there's no turbos that's interesting when everybody else is going turbo fours yeah that the Accord was just released not too long after that or revealed I should say and they completely got rid of the V6, I believe, and I think they're just down to two turbocharged yeah. four cylinders. Not only no turbos, but they are pretty much the only people still throwing a V6 in there, which well, is cool. Especially one that's well, Fusion Sport has a turbo V6, which yeah. is cool. But yeah, straight. But yeah, NA just V6. just for those wondering, the Camry engines there's a two and a half liter four cylinder and a uh, three point five liter V6, and both make a decent amount of power too. They both look good on paper. I'll I'll agree to that. Um, new eight speed automatic transmissions. I would say everything's a little bit eco tuned, uh, especially the four cylinders, a little buzzy here and there. Um, they are three quarters of the way there. I would say. I would say by a mid cycle refresh, they might um, bring the bring all the ingredients to make a really sought after, performance minded driver's Camry. But for now, it's just a really nice, pa- really good looking package uh, with some really reliable, super efficient engines. Yeah, if you're one of those people who's a little skittish about turbos, I guess this is the, the way to go. <laughs> Which, I mean, we, we get questions about that sure, still. We get sure. a lot of viewers ask about you know, reliability in turbos. Those people are going to have to deal with it real soon because yeah. everybody's going <laughs> right, to have right. Well, right. now I'm thinking about the new Accord, and it, it makes the new Camry seem like it's way behind. Because now the Camry is just coming out with an 8-speed automatic transmission. Mm-hmm. The Accord's coming out with a 10-speed, an available 10-speed. Uh, the Accord has two turbocharged engines, and the Camry is sticking with naturally aspirated. So, it's is the is Toyota falling behind, or is it more of them being conservative and just sticking with what works for them, and maybe hoping that Honda kind of gets some into tr- some trouble with their new hardware? Or, They're or sticking what is that? with what they know, man. The car is going to be reliable for a while, and for sure, I think I do like the new design. It looks good, but it's not over the top or anything. It's still just a bland car, and that's exactly what I want out of that car. So mm-hmm. I like what they're doing with it all. Now, I'm now my see what's in- my question is: Will it siphon away SUV drivers? Is the mid, you know are the headlines true? The midsize sedan is dead, or what's is this enough to stem the tide, or or what? I don't, I, I don't feel that the midsize car sedan the midsize sedan is dead. No, I was hoping that this would further chalk one up in the midsize sedans. <laughs> Uh, cat in midsize sedan's corner, but um, I mean, I love driving the uh, Passat and the Fusion Sports. That's a great car. If this had come out uh, fulfilling all my expectations, I wouldn't necessarily say the SUV is dead, but I would say that man, 
it really <clears throat> it's a compelling case to stick with the sedan. Yeah, I, I believe there's a market out there for a driver's sedan, and I, I think it should come. And if you're in the market for that, this is a good time because they have to be more competitive mm-hmm. to, 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 right. stay, stay, to stay relevant. So um, you know, I think it's good for the customers. Sure. And just so everyone knows, price on that ranges like 24000 all the way up to thirty five, And uh, that's, that road test should be on Motor Week soon. And uh, you can catch it on our YouTube channel later if you want more details. Up next, something a little bit more fun, or a lot more fun, the Honda Civic Type R. $60,000 Honda. Yes. Who would have ever thought that that was going to come out of a Civic? So, um, what's it, $32,000? Yeah, maybe give some backstory to yeah. some people that oh, I'm about to. aren't hip so to it. MSRP is $34,775, but these dealerships are marking them up like, you know, thirty Insane grand. amounts. Like, it's just absolutely unheard of. I mean, I understand the reason is because they're limited production, but, you know, when the Hellcats first came out, that was, like, one of the first times that I really paid attention to dealer markups, and they were up, like, $10,000, and they're not even hiding them. They're literally writing them right on the Monroney's dealer markup or dealer profit, and it's, like, $30,000. So you're paying an extra thirty grand just to basically have the right to buy a car that already costs thirty five yeah, grand Or a Turbo 4. Right, so, which it's a wild. turbo four that makes it's a two liter turbo four that makes three hundred and six horsepower. So tell us a little bit, Zach. You drove it. Tell us a little more about the whole package, not just the. Uh, I mean, the, sticker the whole package shock. for the money. If you're paying the MSRP, is is phenomenal. It comes in one package, which is the touring trim. So you get everything in there that you want. It's totally daily drivable. Uh, the thing that I really like about it is pretty much everything stiffer than in the SI. The bushings, the suspension. Uh, you know, the torque steer is not there at all. You know, you can literally sit there, put your hands in the air, throw it in first, shift to second, and it will not barely go left or right whatsoever. Uh, mm. The thing corners like a razor. It's phenomenal uh, in that aspect. I mean, I was pushing it hard, and it just grips. Like, it's an insane amount of grip. And it's got 30 uh, – it's got a tire profile of 30. Like, it's on rubber bands. I it's, noticed that, too, silly. when you did your first look. It was insane looking how thin yeah. those tires were. I mean, but you probably it, felt everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you feel a lot. It's an easy way to bend a rim pretty quickly. That also. <laughs> you got to be very careful. So, uh, But, I mean, luckily, most of the people buying this car uh, have at least an idea of how to drive, I would hope. But some of them will be also 17 with rich parents, so they'll park this right next to their Ford Raptor in the driveway. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, just kind of bro out. But, I mean, <laughs> you know, the car is great if they would just remask it, man. I mean, I could you imagine going – if I was going to pick up some girl on a, on a first date in this car and I pull up to her house, I'm like, hey, I'm here. And she walks out. She's like, call me. Where are you? I'm like, oh, I'm in the blue car. You don't see me? She's like, eh. But – what what are you saying about yeah, I didn't the looks? Follow you, you on that one. You don't like the looks, or it needs to look crazier. Like I'm, I'm, the thing is ridiculous looking, man. Like they put a spoiler on top of the spoiler. I was gonna say that wing like, is crazy, dude. I mean, it, I see a an STI that's been played with a little bit, and it's just I don't know. But I did see a computer generated. Um, I sent you the picture the other day. Oh, that the, was computer the, generated? The rocket bunny kit. That looked good. Oh, man, it looked good. So, I mean, if I had this thing in my hands for a while, you know, I feel like uh, I can make it, you know, do You'd my maybe own tone thing. it I'd down a little happy. bit. I mean, it's it's still, it's not going to really be toned down. It's still going to be, like, over the top, but it's just not, I don't know, I'll just fix a few things with it. Sure. Well, but, we'll if you send me that photo, I'll put that on the video version of the podcast. I could. So, uh, I do want to so, mention, though, the brakes are that. awesome. Um, oh yeah, the the exhaust sounds like a hair dryer. Like, really? Oh yeah, you mentioned it's that. It's almost in your first more look. quiet than a hotel hair dryer, but like <laughs> not quite as loud ones. as my mom's was when I was really young and she'd wake me up. So <laughs> it's just it's it's too quiet. But I mean, everyone's gonna throw an exhaust on it. Everyone's gonna you know immediately tune it, make these things quicker. But what you get out of the box. Type R is pretty gnarly. So it's worth getting the Type R versus what? Getting an SI and doing the mods yourself? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, the SI is a uh, complete letdown despite the hat that I'm wearing right now. Um, the SI, you'd, use, you'd have to do so much work to it, spend the extra money, buy the Type R. Um, you know, and you hop in a Focus um, ST and then you go to a Type R. I mean, I don't exactly remember the price difference there. You're paying at least like eight grand more for the Type R or something. But I mean, just how much better the Type R feels. You can just tell like rolling five mile an hour in a parking lot. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I think so. 
But, you know, then, you know, once you want to start talking about GTI or uh, RS, that's when it gets fun. Yeah, once you start pitting those cars up against each other. Yeah. I think we need to take all three to the track. I think that sounds like a great idea. Is the uh, day-to-day ride in the car as rough as the RS, Focus RS? Ooh. Um, I'd say it's not as rough as the Focus RS. And the cool thing is, you know, you've got the three settings for dampers and the steering, so it all changes. Um, you got Comfort and then Sport or whatever and then Plus R. Plus R is great, but I think I kind of wish that I could maybe uh, toggle the steering like you can in some other cars and um, just play with the steering a little bit. I mm-hmm. thought maybe it was a little bit too stiff in Plus R, so I actually wouldn't have minded, I think, putting like Comfort in Plus R mode. But then other than that, everything felt great. Gotcha. It, it all works cool. very and well it's, ma- it's manual only, right? Manual only, just like the SI. Cool. All right, well, that's good news. We'll have more on that car also coming up on Motor Week, so stay tuned. Now we're going to slow things down a bit. Sorry to disappoint. It's the 2018 Chevy Equinox, which we recently had a road test on. And this is another one where it's all turbo power. We had the 1.5-liter turbo, but I think there's a 2-liter turbo as well, right? And, uh, yeah, it's all turbo. And it's odd because this is part of GM's downsizing program because the Equinox is... Just like the GMC Acadia was, they made it smaller and shorter and lighter and more fuel efficient. So it's odd to see a company making their SUVs smaller and lighter this day and age. But Well, I mean, that thing was always the chubby kid in class anyway. Mm. So it was, though. It was time to take it down. I think it lost like two inches, four inches of total length, and it also caught 400 pounds. Right. So I and, think it looks better but now. But there's more room it, inside, too. And there's more so, room inside. So, yeah. When, when? But that is interesting. You said the the chubby kid in class because it was true, especially with the first gen Equinox. You compare that to a CRV or a Rav Four; it was always just that little bit extra bigger, mm-hmm. but uh, not anymore. So, what did you guys think? We had it in for a couple weeks to test. Uh, what are the impressions from driving it? I think I want to not forget that they're doing the one point six uh, turbo diesel, which is the first in the segment. Right. That's not out yet, but it will be not soon. Yet. Yeah. So that'll be cool to sample. Yeah, hopefully we'll get our hands on I thought the thing was cool. Engines are fine. Transmission is a little picky here and there, but I didn't mind driving it. Yeah, it's uh, pretty decent looking <clears throat> for uh, for what it is. Uh, I think it's on a good platform. I think my big problem with it and kind of with GM in general is just they always seem to cut corners here and there, and they're, they're always in places where you notice them right away, especially on the inside, just with some hard plastics. And, I, again, I understand what the car is, so I'm not going to – really harp on it for too long but uh yeah it's a decent little uh suv and uh they had a very interesting color which i know a lot of people talked about for us it actually it looks we didn't like it in person but looking back at our footage i think we all kind of agreed that maybe it looks better on camera than it does in person definitely because i I edited the the road test for it it definitely looks much better on camera than in person in person (laughs) it's it's this orange color but when the sun hits it it has just this little bit of green in it like green and orange. It's kind of a broke code. The paint quality was really high, though. Right. I mean, the paint itself was. was really nice quality-wise, but the, the color eh, – but like I said, if you watch the road test, it looks great because on camera, it's it, – the camera also does really, something to a it. a really talented videographer shot, the exterior. So. Yes, that is, that is true. <laughs> nice job, dude. I like the uh, push-button all-wheel drive on that. Oh, yeah. really? It's just like boom and you're done? Yeah. It's, it's it an was, option. It was nice. Cool. Easy to use. I think we did that one pretty well. Yeah, I mean, that's that's about all we have to say. Once again, you can catch that video online. Another SUV is the Volkswagen Tiguan, which now has the option of a third row, but it's not nearly as big as the Atlas, which is VW's big mm-hmm. third row SUV. So Garrick went on the national press launch for that, and then we now have one in for testing. Right. But, Garrick, what did you think when you got to drive it at the, the press launch? I liked it. Um the one we had was all-wheel drive, and I, I really liked liked that. We were in uh, Denver, so we were going up some pretty steep grades. Um, it's a four-cylinder. The horsepower is down to 184. It was 200, but the torque goes up. It's at 221, so it goes up 14. So um, I enjoyed driving it in normal mode. Of course, I always play around with the sport mode, and I know a lot of times you all prefer sport mode. I I I thought it was fine in, in normal mode. It was not lacking 
anything. Mm. Um, and I, you know, I think probably for most people who would drive it, it, it would be fine. Um, but you, you have that that option. You were telling me earlier the options for the seat. It's kind of bizarre. It, like oh, you can only get a third row with certain trims or something. Right. The th- the third row is standard on the uh, two wheel drive, but on four wheel drive, it's an option. Okay. I'm sorry, all wheel drive. Okay. Um, and I didn't really ask why why that is, but. Um, but you can get it. And, I mean, is it even – I suppose an adult probably can't even fit into it. It's a pretty <laughs> tiny – No. I, I didn't get that far. <laughs> far <back. laughs> There's no way. It's <laughs> one where the, uh, the floorboard in, in the back is maybe an inch or two away from the seat yeah. bottom. Oh, right uh, okay. So, it's one yeah, of those Your things. knees would be up over your chin sure. for sure. Right. So that's for, like, bringing an extra two kids home from school – Kind yeah. of thing. Or picking up sure. a friend and that's the only spot and be like, hey man, if you don't Sorry. get back there, you're, <laughs> you're, you're not coming. Right. <laughs> so, but that, that aside, now that we have one in, I mean, is this going to be a big hit for Volkswagen? Their SUV game, and until this year, their SUV game had kind yeah. of been hit and miss in the U.S. I hope so. It's definitely got everything that it needs to, to make it there for sure. So, uh, the one we have right now is a little over 30,000. I mean, not everybody on the staff thinks it looks good inside, but... I do. I think it's got that clean executive kind of no it's it's like all business inside. Uh their infotainment is I'm gonna say the best I've the probably the best out there right now. It's really? Easiest to that's use. The new language. iteration they yeah. have mm-hmm. is oh, so it's, user it's, so it's, new, it's newer than the one that's like in, in the, the GTI Golf that yeah. we have. Okay. The screen is a lot cleaner now. And it's, okay. the system is still similar. It's probably just an upgraded or an updated system. Mm-hmm. But like Benny says, it's the thing I love about it, and I don't know why everybody doesn't do this, but when you are scrolling with the actual tune knob, which is there, mm-hmm. um, and you're say you're on Sirius XM, if you're flipping to a channel, it'll tell you what song is on that channel before you even decide so you, you yeah. know to know go to, to it. No, so I, that's just right. a brilliant thing. Absolutely. I think that's really clever, and I, I agree with you. Why don't more cars do that? I'm sure everybody will yell at us because you're supposed to be looking at the road. But hey, when you're know, parked whatever. safely in a parking lot, <laughs> right, right, looking exactly, at the Sirius sure. satellite radio. Sure. But no, but no I, I would agree that their infotainment is mm-hmm. in the older Volkswagens is even good. So I look forward to seeing this I new thought one. The, uh, the chassis was really nice, too. I think it handled really well, mm-hmm. exceptionally well for, for what it is. And um, the only thing, if I had to complain, was the steering was a little bit light. But who cares yeah, in this car? Yeah, steering was super light. <laughs> yeah, it's a complaint some could have. But I... Uh, and this goes with all VWs lately. I, I they're all light and fast. Mm-hmm. Even though it's light, it is quick, um, and I, I kind of like it. I got used to it quick. Too. Coming yeah. out of the parking lot, I was like, whoa! But once I started right. driving on the road, I was like, I could definitely. Right. Use now, and this right. is this is their MQB platform or whatever. This mm-hmm. is because VW has this thing where that platform under, underpins everything from like golf to Atlas up yeah. to yeah. Atlas yeah. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's which awesome. is crazy, but right. that's why they all handle so well, I guess. It's definitely a driver's. Uh, Example in this segment for sure. I so, think so too. I, driving a, a compact SUV, you, you're not really or crossover. You're not losing that driving enthusiast aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Sure. Now, now, Garrick, at the press launch, mm-hmm. did any of the Volkswagen PR people say what the Tiguan's supposed to compete with? Is this a Rav Four CRV, or is it slightly above them? Or well, it's it's longer than most of it. Their their competitors, and there's five or six of them, and. I, off the top of my head, I, I, Santa I, I Fe can't. And right, right. Um, and Subaru. But they, they are cognizant of, of, of the, the competition. Um, and it's total 10 inches longer. And we were talking about um, Volkswagen and uh, their SUVs. And for Americans, they on this and the Atlas launch, they're very focused on appealing to American families. And, and that's where, where you're seeing you know, both, of these, the, both of these vehicles. Um, so I enjoyed driving it. I, I, I really did. It was, it was fun. Well, they know where the money is. That's for sure. Right, they'll, right, they'll probably right, sell exactly. plenty of them. Yeah. The, the price is right on them. Oh, okay. sure, yeah. There's a... It starts at 25 um, and, and goes up. Right, so, that's um, right. That's only a little bit more than the Equinox. So, mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think we covered all those fairly well. And uh, like I said, you can catch those cars on Motor Week and then later on our YouTube channel. Moving on to our lightning round, we have two minutes to debate a trending automotive topic. And uh, I'm going to try to actually stick to the timer this time around. I know a lot of times we run over, so I'm going to try to hold us to this. We got things to do. Yeah. (laughs) So we we can't stay here all day. So two minutes on the clock. 
And the topic is, Volvo has promised that by 2019, every new model they launch will either be a hybrid or a full EV or will be electrified in some way. Mm -hmm. My question is, is Volvo ahead of the curve on this, or is this going to turn out to be another empty promise that we get from automakers about these bold, you know, alt-fuel claims that then kind of never come true? They got the funding to do it. So, okay, well, here we'll wait. We've got (laughs) two minutes. Let's go. So you're saying they got the money to do it. Their, par- their Chinese I mean, parent they, company has the money. They've got some research going I wouldn't on, question so. Volvo's word, too. If they say they're going to do it, there's probably no doubt they will. Yeah. So. But, yeah, they're the brand probably to do it if anybody is. And I, I, I do think they're ahead of the curve and maybe just a little bit overambitious, but not too much. Um, I mean, that's look at the industry, and that's really where we're going. And I think a lot of people, more people, are starting to realize that hybrid and electric, plug-in hybrids and things like that. I mean, that's, that is the future, and I don't think we can put it off too much longer. Yeah. So I think that's kind of you know good for them. Yeah, I think that's one, pretty cool. One thing I think to clarify is they say every new model they launch, which means the existing models they have will carry on till they're phased out. So that doesn't mean as soon as 2019 hits, boom, everything's electric. It, uh, oh, well, right. thank you. There we go. Whoa. There's the famous bell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering where that was. That'll keep us in line. That's all right. That was, yeah. that was Jim Bigwood, our, our audio engineer, delivering a bell. But we still have a minute left before the bell dings. That's so, his part-time job. Also, a new model doesn't necessarily mean the XC90 will you, – uh, it will be – that doesn't, you know, I mean, that's going to turn the ex- into an EV overnight. Yeah, yeah. Even, It'll have time. Even to, in the next generation, every it brand new doesn't model. necessarily mean yeah. exactly, exactly. So, and uh, the other thing I thought about is, I mean, it's easy for Volvo to make a claim like this because they're a fairly small automaker. It's not like mm-hmm. Chevy saying everything is going to be electric because I think you know Volvo customers are probably a little more affluent. They can maybe afford some of the extra cost of that mm-hmm. stuff. Versus, you know, trying to convince people to buy a hybrid Silverado. Mm-hmm. And they have other cars. They probably have an E63 or something else sitting in the driveway. And they also have a European perspective, which Europeans are more apt to, to go that route than, sure. than, than we are in, in, in this country. Especially um, with even regulation lately in right. these cities saying they're going right, to ban exactly. gasoline cars and all that. So. Sure. Ring All right. the bell. All right. We, we covered the subject fairly well, and thank you for the bell, Mr. Jim Bigwood. All right, and don't forget, if you like these guys' opinions, you can follow them on Twitter along with MotorWeek. A lot of us have uh, MotorWeek Twitter accounts where we post photos and comments about what we've been driving and what we've been up to. And, of course, the official MotorWeek Twitter page retweets a lot of that as well. Moving on to a question from one of our viewers. This came via email. Robert from Tyler, Texas, says... I have been searching for a cool, compact, sporty SUV. I like the idea of the Infiniti FX50, but they seem rare. I've also looked into the Honda Element and CRV, the Kia Soul, and other cars from Mazda, Toyota, and Subaru. I hope to buy used, and I would love to hear your recommendations. And then he also says, uh, as a side, my dream car is a 68 to 1972 Chevy El Camino. So I'm assuming that means we have to pick the SUV that as closest to an El Camino as possible. <laughs> not, not quite. I, I think we'll stick to his parameters of a cool, compact, sporty SUV. So, and well, there's that, lots of crossovers that, that out there. That takes out the CRV right away. She gone. You don't uh, think that's cool? No, the Rav Four is gone. Although, if you're looking for used, yeah, I probably wouldn't go Rav Four. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say it right now. Kia Soul was my pick with the turbo. I love the Kia Soul. Key, that thing's now, good. Now the turbo's new, right? That's not. Yeah, but you, you're probably you're not likely to get one of those used, but. I would encourage you to change your used perspective and buy a brand new turbo. So even yeah, even further than that, even if you are looking for a used car, as long as your budget isn't minuscule, at least look at new car prices because used cars are actually pretty expensive right now. They're Especially holding their value. Depend, depending on yeah, depending on brand and value, you know, certain ones hold I mean, on to their value more than if others. If you if you feel good about yourself walking into a new car dealership and not walking out with something, at least go in and see what you can do. I mean, if he's looking at the Infinity FX50. I'm going to go ahead and recommend the new CX-5. Cause that oh, thing sure, yeah. Nice that would be my second choice. Sure. Even the, even if you go used, again, Mazdas hold their value pretty well, so use <laughs> CX-5 because my wife uh, really wants one. And they hold their value, but very nice car, and they're certainly sporty. Would you so, consider a Q5 to be in that category? Yes. Or is that too big? 
I would go that way. Well, I guess if he's looking at it. Well, we we talking compact or subcompact? You know, do we want real tiny SUVs like CHR and HRV uh, and that kind of stuff? I'm still going to recommend the Q5 Q5 because I love driving that thing. I'd go get a used Q5. It's the best fun you're ever going to have in in one of those. So okay, so yeah, so what all? So that. what? So we have our. Let's reiterate our list here. So the Kia Soul, especially the turbo one, the the CX-5. Audi Q, the CX five, mm-hmm. and then you said the Audi Q five. Audi Q five. Yeah, and uh, and you said Mazda CX five. Okay, so Kia there's, Soul will be your bargain one. Yeah, and then that'll Mazda definitely be you'll the pay a little bit for, and then if you have the means, check out a Q five because we all unanimously like the Q five. Yeah, and let us know what you what you choose. <laughs> I was I was thinking about this as I drove in today, and I thought about when Subaru did a Turbo Forester, but then I realized that was almost ten years ago now. The the Forester with the WRX engine, I, feel, I forget uh, if it was Forester XT or whatever it was called. Yeah. That was a they long an time SDI ago. SDI version too, didn't they? I don't Maybe know. If they did. Did. I can remember. I remember driving an XT with a manual. That's oh, pretty cool. awesome. But those are probably those might be too old. So, anyways, though, hopefully that helps. Uh, we didn't give you a straight answer, Robert, but hopefully that helps you narrow your shopping list. And uh, oh, our camera turned off again. For us again there, again. there we're we having go. some technical difficulties in here. I think that's my there you go. There we go. Issues with that thing. So, anyways, all we're right. Back. Now we're on to our the rant and rave, our favorite parts. Does anybody have anything that they want to rant or rave? You're allowed to say good things at this point too, to add to our mm, podcast. I never really think about that. Good things. Well, that'd be a rave, right? The bottle makes my yeah. hand look yeah, small. That's what I mean. <laughs> um, well, I have a quick uh, rant. All right, take it, it away. When uh, we were driving, I was driving a pair of Volkswagens at the track. Again, they're SUVs, so I can't be too mad at them. But I wanted to turn traction off, and I'm looking all over for a button. And I see all these areas where they, they could place a traction control button, but it's within the center screen, which we were raving wow. about earlier. Wow. So you got to go in through the menu system and turn off traction. Even then, it doesn't turn it completely off. So was it that bothered me a little bit that easy day. Excess. It was easy once you knew where it was. I had to look around for it for a I while. I wonder if you could have prompted the voice control. Boop. That's a good turn question. I never control. tried that. I'd still Probably. rather just press a button. Amen. For sure. Well, especially because you said it had a bunch of dead button panels in there. Exactly. Just so empty button panels. It didn't ruin my day, but it would be nice. <laughs> a button would be nice. I forget well, about it either. Because you got to remember the way we do things is we're kind of like jumping in these cars and we're working against light and time and everything. Yeah, so Much like you would be at a dealership yeah. if you didn't have somebody there tutorialing, tutorializing you through it. Tutorializing, I would just use yeah. the word teaching, but okay. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. So. so, okay. Well, that's one thing. I totally agree with burying stuff in a menu is way more annoying than getting an actual button for it so so i'd agree with that any other rants or raves silence i've got i've got a tiny i've got a tiny rave well on a a quick side note about burying stuff in menus i hate when people bury launch control like kind of uh, like a launch launch modes in those as well like like you're basically typing in a code yeah to to take off i just had that new audi r8 v10 plus up at dominion raceway why don't you brag about it and uh (laughs) (laughs) slightly bragging uh but also uh you know a little hat tip to audi for making it super easy to throw that thing in launch mode that thing is just so is it still just crazy foot on the brake foot on the gas yeah i mean i had to go in and select it oh really yeah Yeah, in the past you didn't even have to do that uh, well, it may have activated, I guess, otherwise, but I mean, it was still super easy. Yeah. Foot on the brake, but it makes yeah, sense. Slam the gas. I'll, not, to, not that I'm disagreeing with Ben, but it makes sense a little bit that they would hide that because they don't want you to accidentally throw something in the launch control when you're not ready for it. Not that it would happen. What if you're know, like a stoplight? But there is that <laughs> yeah. one chance that, say, you happen to have your foot on the brake and you're not realizing it and, you let, and mm. you're on the throttle, and then next thing you know, it's giving it everything it has. I can see that going bad. And you're not mm. ready. Right, you're at a you're at a four way stop, and somebody accidentally puts his demon into launch mode. You know, and but, yeah, and we can all agree that the BMW M cars have the trickiest launch control. I ever. might have been talking about those. <laughs> <laughs> I just so, outed you. Outed you. So, anyways, the the little thing I want to rave about is that our new season of Motor Week is coming up, season thirty seven, and oh, we've got some yeah. awesome cars. It's and be spicy. Our next podcast will probably be talking about some of those awesome cars. But I mean, we've got awesome. a real special Lamborghini. We're talking about the Dodge Demon. We'll have a full road test of that. Lots of other cool stuff. So that's something you definitely want to see. 
And uh, to wrap up the podcast, I remind you, you can catch Motor Week on your local PBS station as well as the Velocity Cable Network. And then all those road tests eventually make their way to our website, Mm -hmm. motorweek.org, as well as YouTube. And, of course, you can get more automotive content on our Facebook page, our Twitter profile. And then, like I said, all these guys probably have Twitter accounts, official Motor Week Twitter accounts that they send out stuff for. And so be sure and check all of that out. And for all of us here, our panelists, our audio engineer, Jim Bigwood, our podcast creator, Bob Mixter, and, of course, Garrett, Greg, Ben, and Zach. And I'm Joe. Thanks for joining us for the Motor Week podcast. You've been listening to the podcast of Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine. Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com, RockAuto.com, State Farm, and WeatherTech. For additional information on podcasts, videos, and showtimes, visit our website at motorweek.org. And watch Motor Week, television's longest-running automotive magazine series, each week on your local PBS station.